Dave, aka Kickass, decides to put on the mask again while Hit Girl goes tries to be normal. Chris, aka Motherfucker, vows to get his revenge against Kickass for his father's death. This is Kickass 2. Hi, welcome to the Budget Review. As always, I'm your host, Kenny, and I'm joined by my panel of critics Nick, Julian, and Steve. We just re got back from watching Kickass 2. You can check out our vlog about that. It was a lot of fun to go out there and watch it. Yeah. And. We all have different opinions on it, and I'm going to start off with something we talked about on our way here. Uh, what did you think of the plot, Nick? The plot? I thought it was... It was good, but the problem was that I felt like it was focusing too much, like trying to equal out like the focus on both Hit Girl and Kick-Ass, but it just didn't really mesh well together. It like, it wouldn't be able to put more focus on one. It brought in a lot of unnecessary different stories yeah. in it. Story with Hit Girl? With the, she's trying to fit in. I mean, unless they want to focus the whole movie pretty much on that, I feel like the side story was kind of weak. I, I couldn't tell about it. I didn't care. I thought it much. Was, I thought the movie, like if they wanted to do that. I thought they could have made like a separate, like they they, yeah. they could make a movie just about that, just like Hit Girl growing through that. It would have been stronger. There was a lot of unnecessary scenes in the film. For that. Just not a lot. And just unnecessary. Yeah, like with the Hit Girl thing, it's like I my was a big problem for me because like. With Kick-Ass' story, it was about him being a hero or not being a hero and going between that. And with hers, it was more like this teen drama about high school. And it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. I want to watch her beat people up. I feel like what Man. they were going for with that was her having to adjust to life like to without her life. dad like carrying her and making her do something. Like, trying to like show her what she really wants. And freshmen. Freshmen girls. They're definitely not the same as they used they to be. They do not look like 20 year olds. <laughs> no, not just that. They, they were very extreme in this movie. <laughs> exactly. Well, the actress Chloe Grace Moretz She's is actually like 16, 16, so yeah. she actually does fit that role compared more, yeah. much no, more saying. than other people. <laughs> yeah, at least they didn't like, replace her with like a 30 year old and be like, She's a freshman. Just imagine that. Earlier, right? You can tell by her fully developed body. <laughs> as you know, that we, one of the big storylines going into the movie was Jim Carrey's performance, and I personally liked him in it. Uh, I hope that everyone agrees. I, I, I think it's safe everyone does. I agree. always agree. Hundred percent. So. Now here's a question for Nick. How does he stack up against Nick the Cage? Cage. I actually like Nick the Cage, Rage more. Oh Jesus. Crazy Big Daddy. May his soul rest in heaven forever. I actually I thought Nicholas Cage's character fits better in the Kick-Ass universe. I thought his character could be funnier in the situations than Jim Carrey's, but I still love Jim Carrey's character. Yeah. I really liked him in it. I, I thought I was a little bit surprised that someone who's like more known, at, at least I've known him a lot more in comedic roles. He really played off the he, action hero really well. He, he he's pretty good with his drama roles. He he's not all comedian and or comic. And um, I I really do enjoy that. And I I was really looking forward to him in this movie. I do agree with um, Nick. Nicholas Cage was better. But I think it has they just knew how to handle him well. That uh, Jim Carrey was so underutilized. He's like, underwhelming. He like transported his his character because you know he's a com he's a comedic actor, but like he transferred that into an action hero, which fits so well. We laughed at some of his you know his lines. He he was just so great. He was perfect. I liked how they did it with his face. I mean, if you you guys seen that? Yeah, his voice and the prosthetics after his face, right? I really did enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it his backstory is boring and Christian. I really liked it. It was very well done. He. He stuck to that role as you, you know. He's an action hero, and I, I very enjoyed it. He was one of my favorite, one of my favorite actors. Personally, personally. I would have used more scenes, and I would have utilized Jim Carrey's ability to like morph his body more. Right. I will have to agree that I would keep him in the story longer and use him more, but what happened to him was important for the story, and I would not have kept him the entire time. Mm -hmm. I know that's something that you pointed out earlier. That you wouldn't want him to ha be in the entire movie. And I was disagreeing with that. Do you have a rebuttal for that? I have no idea what you just said. He's basically saying that. Well, I'm we trying. We can't get too much the, into it. Well, we the, can't get too much into it. Plot detail. Something happens that I think the film would be stronger if it didn't happen to him. I understand why it happens, but I feel like the film would be stronger if it didn't happen. They could have did like a different route with it, and it would have been better. And now well, let's move on since that I think that, that was something that we had to address. And how was the director of this? It was a different director than the first movie. 
And you all seem to be shaking your head, saying that, <laughs> signifying well, I'm that I'm shaking my head. He's doing this, and Steve's going. <laughs> I did this. I was just nodding all along. I, I just. Ow. Steve, what do you have something to say? Oh, Jesus Christ. You seem to be nodding with. Do share. It was just, we discussed his play times off the camera. He just didn't. He just didn't. It didn't seem like he knew what he was doing with the comedy and the seriousness. And that's. Uh, I mean, just didn't see it. Like it's the the tone was way off. It, it was very. I don't know. <sighs> Everything was so weird. Doesn't understand edited. anything. We all agree on this. I mean, comedy then straight to plain old gruesome. Yeah, I don't want to get into it, but it's it just didn't. It just didn't fit well. Say it like that. It just didn't. Just no. A perfect example is a scene that happens like later in the movie within the cafeteria where something happens, where Hit Girl does something that it doesn't fit with the tone of the movie at all, in my opinion. It just shows that, like, the film will... The direction that he goes just jumps, like, jokes that don't work. You, They have, like, a really dark scene. He'll try and throw in, like, a dick joke that doesn't really build up. And it doesn't amount. It just throws the tone off of the movie. I don't understand why. I don't know if Matthew Vaughn was doing something. Like, it's a different project, but I, I, I want to know why he didn't come back to direct this. Good question. I don't have an answer. I know. I, I'm, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I have an answer for everything else cool. here, it was but not that. It would have been cool for him to come back to direct it. Mm. And I, I think that everyone's going to agree that the first movie was better. Yes. Of course. And this movie has a cast of different heroes. Well, they're not superheroes, but they're heroes, for lack of a better word. How do you feel about that? Do you think that they did that well? I loved, I loved oh, yeah. all the heroes, like... They were all likable. Donald Faison, I love him. Yeah, I love him from Scrubs and all that. Like so I loved his character. I thought he was used brilliantly. Yeah, got the gravity. That's pretty awesome. Like, They're all the characters were likable. Their names were awesome. And you got your, Come on. You got your homosexual superhero. <laughs> they were all likable. Let's not forget about Night Bitch. <laughs> Did address gay superheroes, which I thought with there should be someone who's gay in superheroes for a long time. That's like, I think we need to have more women superheroes, with, which was covered. You and Night Bitch. And, and with Hit Girl. That, those yeah. are two things that... I think we should talk about more about Hit Girl. Hit Girl is what, a strong, after, independent... After this one question, because I, I want to address it, because okay. it has to do with the heroes, then we'll talk about Hit Girl a little more, because I know that you love her, he loves her, I think Julie I, loves I, her. Of course. <laughs> Julie, Julie's waiting for the day she turns 18. He's counting those days down. How many days are left? About 1,900. Shut up! Is she 16? How's Monday going to change? Let's move on! Okay, so... He means like a really, the really far in the future. The Monday. final scene has a big battle, and I'm a big fan of big battles in movies. I think that we all are, and I just want to address, see who has anything to say about that. I, I loved it. What are you, uh, Julian? I'll do it again. Of course. We'll let you enter this one first. Oh, I enjoyed... I love big battles. Of course, like what Kenny says, I'm pretty sure we all do. Of course, right? I hate no, I, yeah, this, this one sucks. You just, yeah, this I one was like awful. Anything. There you go. Actually, anyway, it was good. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I had certain problems with the choreography. I mean, I did enjoy it. And gave everyone, and uh, Big Battle gave everyone a time to shine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looked pretty That's cool. That's the one thing you always Even want. the minor characters yeah. shined in it. Exactly. Well, we all know what, you know. It's cool. It is. It's cool. Now we can talk about Hit Girl. Let, uh, let's just start off with how was Chloe Grace Moretz's performance? Incredible. Julian? Amazing. Okay, now another adjective from Steve. Spectacular. <laughs> and there you have it. No, <laughs> doing, wait, we are. We didn't. So we didn't do this in the first one, though. What are your thoughts on Aaron Taylor Johnson? Because we didn't do it in the first one. We focused too much on Nicolas Cage. Which I wasn't there. So what do you guys think about him in, in these two movies? Daddy soul. Yeah, I'm taking your job for a second. <laughs> I also want to address uh, Christopher, Christopher Mintz Plast because we didn't really address him as yeah. the, in Even his the, character. Yeah. Yeah, they both did great in the film, yeah. right? They they both did great in the first film. They both did great mm. in the second. I, I like them both in both. In this one, I think films. I didn't really. Like I like Aaron Taylor Johnson. I don't know about Chris Redman's blast. He kind of, I guess, you know, dialed down a little bit in this one. I enjoyed him more in the first one. Yeah, this one I didn't think he was as likable. I still yeah. love him. He's big love. He's big love. Yeah, exactly. But right. in this movie, he just wasn't as likable. I like Aaron Taylor Johnson because he plays the uh, the the nerdy or shy kid, and he doesn't know what he's doing. And every time he tried to fight, he got his, he got his ass kicked in. Which right. is it's kind ironic. of just ironic his name. name. But I mean, it, it's just, I don't know. I like the way he handles the character. I will defend Chris Remins' plot because I do think that he's supposed to be less likable on this because he becomes a villain. Yeah. 
That's Which is actually and I actually good. like the quirky attitude he had as the villain, where he really had no reason to be a villain because he was really terrible at it. His superpower is money. Of course it is. That's why he's got always that. They, they handled it well, though. They did handle it well. His costume... Mm, they did not like his did. costume at all. <laughs> they got it from a it fetish was store. Really it's creepy. in the credits. If you want to know, the if you want to where they got the fetish gear from for the costume, it's in the credits. But speaking of him, no one's really addressing John Leguizamo because I really liked his character. In yeah, this. he had a minor role. I thought he was gonna have a bigger role just because of the name. Yeah, I thought that was gonna be bigger, but I really liked him in it. Yeah, I did too. I thought he was gonna, I thought he was gonna team up with um. Uh, Chris Vermin's plots and join the bad guys and actually get a suit, but yeah, it didn't, didn't happen. He's kind of like, but he did a good job. I liked him. He I was actually really likable. You know, it was funny that he it sounded he did sound like he's more like a, you know, he's not a, like a bad guy because yeah. you know he didn't he didn't he's Luigi. sometimes support. Luigi. Oh he was like this weird mix of like Elf's a butler and a father, like Alfred. this figure for him. He was his Alfred, yeah. but he's not a butler. Now, I'm going to address one of my feelings from this was that one of the big problems with it was that to me it seemed like there were spectacular, really well done scenes, and then a lot of other scenes just really fell flat, and that really pulled it down to me. Does anyone have another reason why they thought that this wasn't as good as it could have been? It's because the way like he handled the tone, like yeah. it would be really dark at times, and then he'd try and like, bring it up with like some comic relief scene while something really dark is happening, and it just doesn't work. You can't just throw dick jokes and poop jokes in at a really, really dark moment in the film. I agree. It was just, like, just thrown there. Like, wasn't it really funny? I mean, like Nick said, it was just comedy, and then, I mean, it was just um, something dark, and then comedy right there. I mean, it just didn't fit. Like, the humor from the first one wasn't so much as, like, dick jokes. It was just the situation it was in. Like an actual person dressed as a superhero, and like like a little girl kicking people's asses. That's funny. She was cursing. Yeah. You have Nicholas Cage being good. a dad going, "Of course, honey, you can have a subatomic machine gun." And he has a creepy mustache. Exactly. That's <laughs> funny. Oh. It's funny because it's oh, unexpected. Awesome. And I'm gonna address something that I felt, and I pointed this out to you guys, that to me there were times where it felt like the perverted humor was just awkward and like really made you feel. At least it felt made me feel uncomfortable there because it was like. I didn't really want to hear that kind of stuff, and it was just really weird. Right. And that goes back to the tone, where it's like they would have something serious, and I'm fine with the idea of a serious moment and then breaking into something comedy because it's very juxtaposed, but there has to be a limit to, to perversion. Like a, like vomiting and pooping jokes. They really I don't felt, fit in I with felt really, I felt really disgusted. <laughs> it just doesn't fit with this movie. <laughs> Like, you can't have a movie like this and have, like, a joke that would be used in, like, scary movie. And like what Kenny said earlier, like, we didn't want to see that teen drama. I mean, I mean, come on, it's an action superhero. I love teen dramas. The yeah, Notebook seriously. is, like, my number where, one where, where movie. I don't know where you guys are. But that, Pretty the Notebook That's is, a team, to me. me, the Notebook is different, though. Not, not, listen, not getting into that I love, listen, listen. To me, it was a, it was a, <laughs> I go to movies to see Twilight, oh, Ryan Gosling, no did, Brian Gosling didn't do it for and you. And all those. No, it's not, no, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying that to me... I go to movies to see like the One Direction trailer, which was, by the way, the best movie ever. It's that the Hit Girl thing was more of a high school drama. Like, I want to see more of Hit Girl, not more Mindy... Dealing with Trying popular girls. Fuck Mindy. No one wants to see that. Mindy got what she deserved. She's not 18 yet, you can't do that. Fine. She's doing his countdown. Screw Mindy. She got what she deserved in the movie. I'm pretty sure Come that on, her so. actress is 18 by now. Oh, she's no, girl. she's 16. Oh, maybe oh, yeah. he, maybe he's a girl. Oh my, he's obsessed. Oh my god. Okay, so let before this gets too long, let's wrap it up and yeah, just say no. We need to go longer. It is already. Let's you lose it. your moment. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna ask. Ah. If he decides to come back, he can go last. I'm going to start with Steve. No, I lost my moment. I'm out. <laughs> what was your rating? Any last words on it? Uh, 2.75. And I wish it could have been a lot better. I was underwhelmed. But the thing is, this is still an enjoyable movie. It is. It's not that bad. But it's just, it could have been a lot more better. For me, I'm giving it a 2.7. Because just it just didn't get to me. I... I wish I could recommend. Sorry, I just, I just get distracted by this fool. But anyways, just didn't get me. 
and I'm not gonna recommend it because it's, it was it just wasn't that good. But like Steven said, it was enjoyable. If you're like, if you're a comic book fan, go check it out. Or a kick-ass fan. Do you guys want to say or are you just gonna stand on the back? Nick's, Nick's was two point five. Alright, can you go? Go ahead, finish. Yeah. Nick is standing over there by the doorway with a bat. I think Steve should be concerned. Oh no 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 <laughs> no. You took away my moment. You look and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 2.5. I felt that on your ass. there were enjoyable moments. It wasn't terrible, but it's one of those movies that you give it a low rating. You know that's really bad, but you just get so much enjoyment out of it. So, I guess it's really up to your discretion of whether or not you want to see it. I, I, if you see it, I'm not gonna criticize you. If you don't, I'm not gonna insult you for that either. It's just up to you. I'm about to go kick ass on your ass. Uh, that's why he's back. <laughs>